What if you weren't allowed to have boyfriends, have sleepovers, see friends, you had to wear a certain type of clothes, had to come back home immediately, have a strict curfew, not even allowed to use your house phone, all without your parents' consent. Today we're going to be talking about the Shafia family, known as one of the most strictest, darkest family that Canada has ever seen. A little note, you guys, I've just gotten my wisdom teeth pulled out, so I am pretty swollen. I can't really talk 100% perfectly. So bear with me today. If you've ever gotten your wisdom teeth pulled out, let me know your experience because I still have a little bit of numbness that is it's manageable, but I would never go through the wisdom teeth experience again. Talking about being a cool kid, look at my cool wallet. If you guys have been thinking about the perfect holiday gift or Black Friday gift, this is the perfect gift that you could give anyone. I want to really thank Exer for partnering up with me today. And Exer is one of the newest, coolest, most secure way that you guys could hold your cards and money. It is made from high quality leather and all you have to do is press the button down here and it pulls out in a really nice domino row. If you're like me and you're like scattering through your bag for your wallet just to find that one card, that's me. I'm always holding up the line. And it has saved me time so much and it's so compact like this. It fits in the palm of my hands. Best thing about this wallet is the fact that you guys could have a track card. This track card fits right into your wallet and if you've ever lost it or you don't know where your wallet is, all you have to do is ring it from your phone. On the app, it even shows you where your wallet is. So I'm gonna hit ring to find. There you go! If you ever want to find your phone, you could do the opposite by ringing. And here's my phone! It is also solar powered, so only two hours in the sunlight and it will recharge itself to use for two months straight. So if you're looking for the perfect wallet and a gift, I have a 40% off discount link down below so you guys can check it out. Thank you so much to Exer for supporting my channel. This is the Shafia family from Afghanistan. They were a big family and the head of the household was father named Muhammad Shafia. This is his wife Tuba and together they had seven children. Muhammad Shafia was known to be a very successful businessman. He started out from Afghanistan and then moved to Dubai where he worked at a, some kind of successful used car business and he also branched out to the real estate business. From there, I believe they moved to Australia and some other places, eventually landing themselves in Quebec. Canada for a business opportunity. He ended up investing two million dollars to a mall and he was also building a huge house for their family to end up settling and living a great life in Canada. Shortly after they settled, Shafia sent a request to the immigration office saying that he wanted to sponsor his cousin to come to Quebec in order to work as their housekeeper slash nanny. Now his cousin was named Rana, but come to find out Rana was not his cousin, she was actually his first first wife. So he was actually into a polygamous marriage, but that's not allowed in Canada. Therefore, he had to obviously pretend that like Rana was his cousin in order to bring her over. They got married in the late 1980s and found out that Rana could not have children. So Shafia had a second marriage in 1989 to Tuba, where they ended up having seven kids. Their eldest daughter was Zainab, she was 19. Zahar, 17. Hamed, their firstborn son. Daughter A, who was never identified. Younger brother B, another daughter C, who she was never identified. And their youngest daughter, Getty, who was 13 years old. The marriage between Shafia and Rana was very rocky and she records it in her diary very detailed throughout the many years. In the diary, she wrote about her hell marriage that she had to deal with, especially after finding out that she couldn't have children. He would taunt her, hit her, and blame her for everything. She wanted to leave, and I don't know what the culture is really like for them, but she says that she cannot leave because he always threatened that he would kill her if she left the marriage. Not only her husband, but their second wife, Tuba, also was like the priority wife or the preferred wife as they call it and she also made it a living hell for Rana. Rana says that Tuba was trying to separate and farther her away from their shared husband and Rana just became like a nanny to the family and she was called auntie to the kids. Tuba was allowed to buy expensive jewelries, learn to drive, and again she was the preferred wife and Rana was someone that she had no freedom. Like she couldn't even use the house phone. She 
only receive fifty dollars in allowance every month. I mean, can you imagine you're wife of a multi-millionaire and you only get fifty dollars of allowance and can't even use the house phone? She was also not allowed to have any hobbies. Tuba would tell Rana, "Your life is in my hands. You are my servant." In her diaries, after moving to Canada, a Western country, of course, the family thought that they were now, you know, a bit more free to do things. After all, this was Canada. It's really free in Canada. I've been there. But even if they were living in Canada, inside of the Shafia home was very much under the strict rule of their father, Shafia. No meeting the opposite sex. No wearing certain clothes. Must wear a hijab for some of the girls. No makeup. Certain attitude. No sleepovers. No going over to friends' house. And so many other rules. And it seems like this rule didn't really apply to the males, but only the females. But to be fair, it seems like I read somewhere that Shafia did provide the family with a lot of money. Money to to eat whatever they wanted, so they never went hungry or anything like that. And he also bought them expensive clothes. Keep in mind, to him, honor. He he continuously says honor about the family. Honor and the family was so important to him. I mean, whatever honor was to him. The children attended regular public school, and they were very accustomed to their Canadian Western lifestyle. Now, one day, eldest daughter Zainab, who was 19 years old, she's pretty much an adult. She met a boy and they fell in love. But again, unlike other families, she was not allowed to have any boyfriends. She was not allowed to date, and the only person that she can meet was a man that their father approved. So she had to meet her boyfriend in hiding, such as in the school library or a secret location, in fear that her. Boy brothers would find out and tattletale to their father, which would be a huge deal. She would tell her boyfriend to act like they're strangers if they were around their brother, and to not give a slightest clue that they're even friends. Come to find out, the man in the family, especially their brother Hamid, was like a mandatory reporter and like the second dad. Even though Zainab was the older eldest daughter, brother, the younger brother, had more power than she could ever imagine. If he has ever seen their sisters do any. Against the family rule, he would report it, and they would get severe punishment. According to them, severe punishment meaning beatings, verbal abuse, and even lots of threats to kill them. It's hard to imagine because it's like, what kind of parents would actually really threaten you to kill them for meeting boyfriends or coming home late? You know, doing teenager stuff. I mean, it's something that most teenagers, actually all teenagers, do. It's a time in your life where you want to explore and have freedom and meet. People, it's just it's just natural human instinct. But Zainab would tell her boyfriend all the time, "You don't know my father. He is that kind of a person." Shafia, the father, he had a lot of business in Dubai, so he actually went back and forth very often. One time when he went back to Dubai, she snuck her boyfriend into the house, which is one of the biggest no-nos that they could ever imagine. She did not know that her brother Hamid would be coming home so early, and unfortunately, they were caught. This is the crazy part, but Hamid, being the firstborn son in the house, had immense power. He told. His older sister that she could not go back to school, so she ended up being confined to her room and not going to school for over a year. I what? Not only that, but if she wanted to leave the house, she needed a relative chaperone. Like she couldn't leave the house alone. Talking about some of the other sisters, Sahar, who was 17 years old, also lived under intense stress. Obviously, really wanted to wear makeup and take off her hijab at school. So whenever she was dropped off, she would go into the school, take off her hijab, put on some makeup, and just kind of act like a normal Western kid. She was accused of kissing a boy and dating, and told the teachers about. How she was so depressed and did not like how the family was treating her, and so she was talking to school counselors or whoever about her situations. But it seemed like it wasn't as serious as most Western teachers would know, because they don't know the other cultures that were what kind of lifestyle or what kind of honor family that they were truly living in. She was so unhappy with her family and the strict rules that she attempted self harm by poisoning herself. Unfortunately, her mother. 
Twitter, Tuba only replied, she can go kill herself. You can go to hell. Her own parents didn't even come to comfort her. After this incident, obviously the school officials called the parents to let them know like what is going on into your family. Let's talk about it. But the parents got super angry and was saying that Shahar was lying and that she was a bad teenager and that, you know, it was all made up. And whatever happened between Sahar and the parents, she ended up coming back to school and saying that she was okay and she just wanted to go back home. She didn't want to make a big deal about it, so that case was closed. But on the side, Sahar was calling her relatives back in Afghanistan saying that she really wanted to get out of the family or run away or do something. Their youngest daughter, Getty, who was only 13 years old, was also rebelling against the family. I mean, of course, she's 13. She has her own hobbies, interests, want to meet friends. But instead, she was going through an extreme depression, missing schools, bad grades, and she was even caught shoplifting. She claims that she wasn't only punished by her parents, but her brother, Hamed, for just coming home a little late from the mall, and she was beaten by her brother. So so it's been about a year now since Zainab has been punished from going to school, but she couldn't take it anymore. So she somehow contacted her boyfriend through her sister and they were able to seek Lee chat, I believe using emails. So she one day snuck out of her home and explained what was exactly going on in her family to her boyfriend. She told him that she wanted to run away and rather you're gonna help me or not, I'm running away tomorrow. And the very next day, her boyfriend picked her up and she was declared missing. Zainab decided to seek help from a woman's shelter. And once Hamed, her brother, found out that she was missing or ran away, he called the police and filed a missing persons report. The day that their eldest sister was missing was also the day that the whole kids knew that they were also going to be in trouble. The rest of the kids didn't even go back home that day because they were afraid they were going to be punished by their own parents. Police came and were talking to the kids and the kids actually confessed what was going on inside their house. And the kids told the police about their abuse, being kicked in the face, punched in the eye, the threats, and so much more. So of course, their parents were called to this incident and it seems like as soon as their parents were called, the kids just got so afraid that they just started to kind of downplay things. And the police just let them go back to their house and nothing much really happened after that. So this is where the things get super shaky and scary. It's been about one month since Zainab has left the house and Rana overheard a conversation between Hamed, Tuba, and Safar. They were discussing about how they wanted to kill their daughter Zainab and the other ones. Now Rana assumed that this was her, that she was also the next target. Eventually somehow Zainab and Tuba, her mother, got in touch with each other and they had a plan. And police believe the murder plan started from here. So to Zainab's surprise, Tuba, the mother said she will allow her and her boyfriend to get married as long as she returns home. Zainab obviously thought that this was not like her parents, but who knows, maybe her running away was something that their parents needed a wake-up call and finally allowed her to be free and become an adult. So she ended up coming back home and even though her parents did not want her to get married, she stuck with it and they decided to have a marriage ceremony. Two weeks later, Later, after Zainab returned home, it was finally wedding day. It was reported that actually in this small wedding reception, even her boyfriend's family didn't come because they also didn't approve of the marriage. But according to the relatives, not even having the boyfriend's family come to the reception really embarrassed Tuba, I guess. Not even having like the boyfriend's family come was like a disaster and a failed marriage to her. She was so upset that she fainted during the ceremony. This is when Zainab just couldn't take it anymore. She had a small talk with her mother and that day at the ceremony, she told her husband that they had to get a divorce and that the marriage was over and it wasn't even a couple hours. I'm sorry. I have to stick with my family. The father was so angry, but he was in Dubai and he told his relatives that if he was there, he would have killed her right then and there and that he needs to restore the family honor by marrying someone else that he approved 
who was Tuba's uncle's son. Is that like second cousin, third cousin? I don't know. During this whole time before their father arrived, Sahar was also caught at a restaurant seeing her boyfriend as well. Now she was caught by her younger brother, B. And B told their parents, you know, I saw Sahar with a boy and I think she's dating someone. And the truth was, yes, Sahar was seeing her Latino boyfriend and they were very much in love. Sahar even fainted in school and people were getting very worried because she was not eating. She lost so much weight that again, she fainted in school. When the nurses called their parents to pick her up from school, nobody came. And Sahar ended up just walking back home herself. So it was these three girls that was causing me trouble in the eyes of their family. Now it was finally time for their father, Safira, to come back home from Dubai. To their surprise, when their father arrived back in America, they all claimed that their father's attitude changed and that he was much less strict and he was very lenient. But of course, it was a little bit fishy. Did the father really forgive their daughters or was it all part of a plan. Now shortly after their father arrived, it was June 22nd when the father purchased a used car, a 2004 Nissan Sinantra, and told the family that they're all going on a nice summer vacation. So the next day, they all hit the road and ate some good food, went to see some waterfalls, see some people, and you can see in these photos, they are having a wonderful time. During this time, and even couple weeks before this, police actually found evidence evidence of Hamed using his laptop and his phone to search for Can a prisoner have control over their real estate? Canada mountains with lake in Quebec Documentary on murders and where to commit a murder at one point when the family was sleeping at a motel, it was recorded on his phone that Hamed drove all the way five hours to check out crime scenes to see where it would be of the perfect spot. On June 29th at 8 p.m., the family checked out of the motel and headed for another road trip. Investigators believe that they hit the road late at night, starting from 8 p.m. to over midnight on purpose so that the girls would be tired. Now here is when the things get a little mysterious and it's pretty much kind of a guess of what investigators think happened. So there were two cars, a Lexus owned by the family and the Nissan, the used car. In the Nissan, Rana, Zainab, Sahar, and Getty were riding and the driver who was switching between Tuba, Jafira, and Hamed and their Lexus with their other children. The next day, the police found the Nissan car underneath the water and all four members of the family, Rana, Zainab, Sahar, and Getty passed away. Even till this day, we don't know how, but Rana and the three girls were led to a secluded location in a canal, and police believe that they were held underwater by someone or some people. Were they held underwater all at the same time, one by one? We don't know. The mysterious thing about this is that there were really no signs of struggle. The only thing they found were some bruises on top of their heads that suggest that they were struck with something, but it was only found in three of the girls' heads. So they could have been struck by something, then drowned, then put back into the car. That's when the family somehow pushed the car into the canal. There are certain possibilities of how this happened, and they believe that all three members, Tuba, Sophia, and Hamid, were at the scene, and one of them might have been taking turns, or one of them leading the whole thing to self-lead the car inside the water. But when that wasn't working, they believe the Lexus was used to push the Nissan car into the canal. And they found evidence of the Lexus car's headlights, pieces that broke off, that were still stuck or inside the Nissan car. The next day, there was a record of Hamed even calling his sister's phone to make it seem like he was looking for them when he knew that they were gone. Around noon, the three members of the family, the parents and Hamed, walked into the police station seeking for help of finding their missing children and Rana. Immediately, the police knew something was up, that the story did not make sense. First of all, the family did not seem like they were in a panic. 
they seemed okay. And when three of them were interviewed separately, they still remained their innocence, that they had nothing to do with it, and they did not know what was going on. They all give a story that it seems like Zainab was a troubled teenager and that she took the car and wanted to go for some joy ride during the middle of the night and somehow she ended up inside the water due to an accident because she couldn't drive. There was actually a witness in the scene and it was an eight-year-old boy saying that he saw two cars in the scene that day. So the police knew there was some other car that could have been involved. The autopsy showed that there were no drugs found in the system of any one of the girls. And again, just three of the people had bruising on top of their head. The final conclusion of their death was drowning. I mean, if you think about it, it's four people. And they were all grown up, minus Getty, who was 13, but still. Like, how did they not overpower the people who were doing this to them? Like, who did the actions? Were all three doing the actions? Like, no one really knows, but to overpower four people, that's 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 a lot. So if you guys have any guess of what you think happened and how they were able to get four of the girls to drown, let me know in the comments because I can't even figure that out. There was a lot of media trying to interview the family after that day, and they were seen being very very tearful and at loss of their own children. But of course, behind the scenes, police knew that this family was very suspicious. So with enough evidence, they were able to get a wiretapping warrant granted by the judge. And what police heard throughout the couple days was shocking. All three of them just bashing and cursing at their deceased family members. To hell with their boyfriends, filthy rotten children, whores. And talking about how they believe the police might be onto them that they all have to stick to the same story and just a lot and that was enough evidence for them to get a warrant to finally arrest the Safiya families. When the Shafia family was arrested, they kept their innocence. Somewhere throughout, they, I believe, changed the story to Hamed being the one who done the deeds to actually pushing the car into the water. They came up with the story saying that he was young, he was just playing around, accidentally pushed the car into the water, and he didn't report it because he was scared. Of course, prosecutors were firm that they premeditated everything from the Google searches, from all the reports from 911 from past. They believe that this was something called honor killing. One of the prosecutors stated, what masquerades as honor is really a man's need to control a woman's sexuality. If a man cannot control his own household, which is represented by the behaviors of the female members, it means he cannot be trusted for any other public matters. Their youngest son, B, testified in court saying that their family was great and that his sisters were the rebellious ones being bad teenagers and that it was him who actually searched where to murder because he was suicidal he didn't know the difference between suicide and murder and that's why he searched murder eventually the judge did not buy their stories and they were all sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole for 25 years this is such truly a sad case the girls only wanted freedom. Rana also wanted freedom. They were tricked into having a wonderful vacation by their own parents and their own brother. And the fact that there were so many chances of getting help from yet no help was given is just crazy to me. Let me know what you guys have thought. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, your help goes a long way just by hitting the like button, sharing, and subscribing so that we can share these messages and, and what kind of things that go on so we can learn from them. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video.